recipient WW2 and U.S. Marines. Woody? Thank you. Thank you very much for that warm New York welcome. I would be amiss if I did not recognize my friend and longtime buddy, Frank Curry. We've been through a lot together. We've been to a lot of Medal of Honor functions over the years, and we're very pleased that he'd make the effort to come out and join us today. He tells me this is the third time he's been out this year. So give him a big one. Took a lot of grit, but he's here. Thank you very much. Madam Mayor, Congressmen, we got a couple of them here. Go star families. Let me start off by saying right up front, this is not about me. This is about them. They are the reason that we're here. They made the sacrifice that brought us all here. 
Sometimes we hesitate to ask, but I'm going to be bold enough to do it because I'm going home tomorrow. <laughs> I know we have a number of Gold Star family members already recognized and we know who they are. But sometimes we have, we have folk in an audience, and I've experienced this several times, that have never let it actually be known or haven't gotten into the spotlight in any way, even though they sacrificed a loved one of some relationship, maybe way back. Maybe it wasn't in the current wars that we've experienced in the last few years. Maybe it was before that. Maybe they had a grandpa that served some time and lost their life in the war, in the armed forces, whether in war or not. So could I ask, and the Gold Star families, please join in. Could I ask those who may have lost a relative of any, any description, any relationship, in any time in the history of our great country, in the armed forces, would you please stand or raise your hand so we can see everybody? Please, folks, just look around. You, you see the... Let the rest of us thank them for their sacrifice, please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Sometimes we fail to recognize those out of the current era. Your presence here today speaks actually louder than words. It says, at least to me, and I believe to you, you are an American in the truest sense of the word. Because you're here. Your presence says to those who lost a relative serving America, they are the true heroes of America and of the state of New York. It says also that you do not want them to be forgotten. As I travel this great country of ours, I often experience a conversation with someone that expresses that fear or that anxiety. Maybe it's not a fear, but it's an anxiety that my loved one, who gave all they had, may be forgotten. These memorials that are going up through the efforts of a community, not, not us, them, like Joe. If Joe had not brought the word back from Florida or wherever it was and started a movement, we probably wouldn't be here today. But it is the communities that are making these possible simply because you do not want them to be forgotten. The words of the day that I'm proud to be an American where at least I know I am free and I won't forget the men and women who gave that right to me. The day I was born, on October the 2nd, 1923, I was handed two of the most precious gems 
that can come to we as a people, we as an individual. The first was the gift of life. God gave us our first breath. Our mothers nursed us into health. And the second gift was the gift of freedom that somebody else had already paid for just so I could be born free. Now history seems to repeat itself. And the sacrifices go on having lost just very recently in the last few days two rangers and the cause for sacrifice does not change the loss of loved one brings the same grief to everybody it has the same heartache attached to it and requires us to remember this memorial monument a tribute to the families and relatives of this great state not just here but others too we pray will be in some way a solace. Maybe a little bit of less grief <coughs> because they have been remembered. We can't forget we won't forget. We never will. We honor and remember still so many loved ones with aching hearts wait with silent tears for those who can't come home yet they are near. Close to our hearts but we who remain long to see them smile again and hear their laugh again just one more time to have them here in a place of honor And how we wish, how we wish we could bring them back for just one moment. I guess it makes no difference of age. If my mother were living today and I did something I <clears throat> perhaps should not have, she would still say, boy, you shouldn't have done that. Age makes no difference. We're still a boy or we're still a girl. Our mother would never say, look, man, of course, she would never say, look, lady. No, she'd say, girl. There is a lament that somebody else wrote, I wish I had. It's called, 
a gold star family lament. I'd like to leave close with those words. Our boy went off to war. He said he wanted to go to give many others a freedom they don't even know. He said, I was so fortunate to be born in the USA and have all of the privileges that have come my way. I could tell that he loved America and wanted to do what's right. He wanted to do his duty for country and, if required, to fight. We all knew the danger, but prayed that he'd be safe. Then we were notified that he had met his fate. Our hearts broke in many pieces and our grief was very deep. He was willing to give although it made us weep. We are so proud of what he did and the sacrifice he made. We pray that our country by his efforts will be saved. And as we shed our tears of sorrow, we know he rests in peace. Heaven given all he had to help wars of violence cease. And he would say to others, be brave and stand strong. We're all a part of America right where we belong. He's standing guard in heaven with all of his buddies near. They sacrificed their lives so we could be safe here. Let us all remember what freedom really costs. Never, never to forget the loved ones that many of us lost. May God continue to bless and ease the pain and sorrow. And may he also continue to bless this country, the greatest one in the world. Thank you very much.